Hi guys, thank you so much for uh, accepting my invitation for this uh, uh, for this event. So at first, please introduce yourself to the audience first. How about from you, Alex? You want me to go first? Yeah, thank you. Okay, my name is Alexis Sklarevsky. I'm a bass instructor at Musicians Institute for a long, 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 long time. So I have lots of years of teaching experience. Um, I live in, an, I've been lived in Los Angeles for most of my life. I've worked with lots and lots of different artists from all kinds of different styles of music, um, lots of recordings, lots of touring with different bands. Um, and um, yeah, I've interacted with lots of students from, from China when they've come in. And um, I'm going to answer some questions for you. <laughs> Thank you. How are you, Simo? OK, my name is Simon Pen, also known as Hongli Pen, and I'm basis. A programmer and I work with like different artists in China now. So yeah, I graduated from MI at like uh, 2000, uh, 12, uh, like 14, like and uh, I went to Berkeley and I graduated at 18, and now I'm in Beijing working. Yeah, yeah. also in music. All Chinese artists. Good bass player, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> already, already post all his uh, like uh, biography and resume on our on our website. So okay, let's go for the next question. So could you guys introduce your program, like the courses, facilities, or other things, please, Alex? You want, you want me to just go first every time? Yeah, yeah. Said, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just okay. Um, well, what I do what I do at uh, at Musicians Institute in LA is um, I have taught almost every class in the base department at one time or another, but the classes that I've taught the most are the technique classes, um, fretboard classes like learning chords and scales and all that kind of stuff, and lots of reading classes and performance. That's really the things that I've been doing the most over the, over the years. But for whatever reason, I ended up sort of becoming the technique teacher for basically for all levels of, of the regular school. So that's what I do. Okay. Uh, how, how, how about you, Simon? Simon? Yeah, my, my program, BIT, yeah, forever. Like, <laughs> yeah, my, my favorite school, like, and the favorite program, and you just get in the program, and I, I think the life there is, like, practice every day and play every day is good training for every musician like yeah you can get that much opportunity to like you train yourself with different level of musician different style of music yeah okay thank you uh, so next one is uh, which course is your favorite course at mi um wow well, I'm not really sure. I have a favorite course because I've never really, I haven't been a student there in <laughs> 40 years. Um, I think, uh, you know, let me, let me, let me just answer the question. Like, I think, I think uh, Simon has a good point. I think what you need to do when you come to music school um, is you just have to be very serious about working on, on things. Um, you know, I think, for example, if you don't know, anything about theory or scales or if you've never really practiced chords and learning that kind of stuff it takes a long time to learn it i mean you have to sit down and figure things out i mean you can you can have somebody show you things but it's not the same as figuring it out for yourself so you have to be willing to put in some time and really practice and work on your technique i mean you know if you've never slapped on bass and you start it's going to sound terrible for the first six months. And then all of a sudden you start getting better at it. So I can't really say I have a favorite class. I think they're all good. I mean, if you don't know how to read music, um, you have to sit down and work on it all the time, every day, lots and lots of hours. That's really what it comes down to. And, you know, I'm sure Simon being a student not that long ago, that's, I mean, I know that that's what he was doing. Over you? to you, Simon. <laughs> uh, I mean, every every course is, is different. Like, 
um, LPW, you play with different players, and that's what what you can do in real life. Like you play with different like musicians, like you 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 can know how to deal with them, and uh, uh, also the technique class, it gives you a lot of opportunity to like practice for yourself, like be prepared for like real life. You know, be a musician. The school is like give me like so much time and opportunity to make like mistake because I can make any mistake in you know real world. So yeah, every course is important. I mean, it's my favorite. Yeah, and I I would just say also that if you're in music school, uh, I think a lot of students show up. Uh, they like one kind of music or they like something and they go oh i want to do this because i like it and i go well maybe you should do other things because you already know how to do that so there's a lot of for you know it's very um it's very obvious when you see people who are really into playing jazz and they don't like anything else so they don't want to do anything else and the same thing is true when you um see people who are really into playing like metal or rock they go, oh, this is what I do. I go, I'm not interested in any of that stuff. And I go, well, you know, you're here. Maybe you should get interested, <laughs> you know, because this is what you need to do. You know, you need to do all these things. And usually people get into different things at various levels. You know, they get they get into it to a certain point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go for the next question. Next one sure. is, uh, what? why did you choose I'm I? Well, when I was a student, mm -hmm. um, I chose MI. I, I applied, I applied to two music schools. Um, I applied to Berkeley in Boston because I'm from Canada originally. I applied uh, to Berkeley in Boston, and I applied to what was then BIT and mm -hmm. GIT in LA. And uh, I literally chose to go to to California because they gave me my student visa fastest. <laughs> that was literally how I ended up there. That's a good reason. Because <laughs> I was ready to go to Boston. You know, I thought, well, this is close because I lived I lived much closer to Boston mm -hmm. than L.A. Yeah. But, um, you know, a lot of music I like historically that I've liked, you know, the musicians that were in Los Angeles really were some of my favorite players you know people that i'd listened to all my life and i just thought you know i'll never forget the first day of school at mi i walked up the stairs and uh, robin ford was sitting there the guitarist you know and i mean i listened to him for years already and i just went like i literally was oh my god it's robin ford and i thought well how great is this i mean not that i was going to play with him but just that he yeah, was yeah. there you know and i go hi <laughs> you know, and he's like, hi, you know, so I was, you know, that was pretty cool. How about you, Simon? Um, first thing, I might not need any, like, education background before you get in, so I don't need to be, like, high school graduate, graduated, yeah. so, so, yeah, yeah, you, you don't need any proof, and, like, you just send a video. It's easy way to get in, but it's, like, great opportunity great chance you choose there and you know they have they have a lot of course for you and yeah a lot of lessons you just it's really useful you use useful yeah mm -hmm. okay so yeah, that's why i choose there okay so go for the next one is so uh, what is your most impressive experience or memory at mi in the past years Oh, wow. Well, that's, um, for me, um, there's been a lot. Um, I, um, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, as a student, really, that my best memory mm -hmm. is that I went to school, there was a group, there was only 16 bass players in my class mm -hmm. when I went. So it was very small. And um, I remember meeting a bunch of uh musicians from all over the world i had never met musicians from europe before i knew you know you were basically playing in your little world at home and that was it and i got there and these guys were my age you know we were all 21 22 20 and they were 
as Simon's been talking about, they were immediately like practicing all day and rehearsing at night. And, you know, they were writing music already and doing all these things, you know. And at first, I think I wasn't really doing that very much. Like I thought if you practiced, you know, like a couple of hours a day, that was a lot, you know. Mm. These people were crazy. I mean, it was like eight, nine, ten hours. They would get there at eight in the morning and go home at midnight, you know. And I started to get into that world. I started to realize, wow, I mean, these people are really serious about this. And it was very inspiring. I mean, it could be very depressing, too, because you would listen to somebody who plays really, really well at a very young age and you're going, oh my God, like I, what, what on earth did they do? I mean, how did this happen? Um, so that was very inspiring. And, and, and that kind of kept, kept me going for years and years and years, like right up until now. I mean, I still, you know, I still play my bass a lot. Uh, it's not, you know, even when I'm not getting paid for it or I'm not teaching, I mean, you know, teaching is only part of what I do. It's not my whole life. Um, but you know, apart from that, my memories are, you know, I mean, I met Jaco Pastorius at MI. I, uh, you know, I saw all kinds of people playing there uh, all throughout the years, like that were uh, unbelievable, like just amazing musicians coming through there all the time. So that, of course, was always great because they were all my heroes. You know, I was like, oh my God, like there's Larry Carlton. Oh, wow. I mean, you know, I'd only listened to his albums up until that point. And then there he was all one day, you know? And so you're kind of like, you know, that was pretty cool. And Ray Brown, I remember, I remember taking a lesson with Ray Brown and that was pretty amazing, you know, cause I'd always listened to him all my life. And so there he was. That's great. Okay. So how about yeah. you, Simon? Um, I think every moment in the school is like great. Simon, Simon's most memorable moment was meeting me. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true, that's true. <laughs> was, was that like, sir? I'm lying, I'm totally lying. <laughs> that's true, that, that's true. With Alex, I had like so much to practice. I recognized, okay, it's not enough practicing. Like every time he, sh he shows me like, new technique, new way to salute a, a solution. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's so great. Like he pushed, he pushed me like thinking by myself, not like rely on others. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a very, you know, that's a very important thing. And, you know, I think most of the teachers at MI are like that. I mean, um, yeah. because you have to, you have to teach yourself or you have to learn how to teach yourself because school is only a year or two years or something like that. But, you know, your music career goes on for your whole life. So you're always learning something. You're always working on things. And, you know, it's like Simon. I mean, he graduated from MI, what, almost 10 years ago, Simon, right? No, 2014? No, 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 not yet. 2014, is that what you said? Uh, 2014, yeah. Like yeah, 80 totally years. Crazy. Yeah. So, you know, long after school is finished, you're still playing the bass, right? So you're still, you know, working on tunes and having to figure stuff out and do all that. So you got to learn how to do it all. You know, that's, that's what you, that's what you learn. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the next question is, uh, yeah, actually the next question is for our instructor. So this question okay. come, is come from some the Chinese study abroad agency. So from the agency. Okay. So they would like to know what kind of student would you like to meet in the live audition or what, what, what kind of student would you like to recruit to MI? I mean, or we can say what kind of student is your favorite student? Well, okay, let's see. Um, well, here's, here's what I always ask people when I meet them, mm -hmm. because um, I, if somebody is just sort of beginning in their, in their musical world, um, you know, they may not be a hundred percent sure of what they want to do. I mean, all they, all they know is that they want to play music. They don't really know what that means. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, most young musicians, they see somebody on television or 
on the internet or they hear something and they go, Oh, I like that. That, that would be fun to do. You know, that would be, so they don't really know for sure, but all they know is that they're interested. So I would always ask um, students when I first meet them, you know, do you have any idea of like what you would like to do with, with, you know, with your music career, with your bass playing, let's say specifically. And, you know, 99% of the bass students that I have uh, seen, and I've seen thousands of bass students over the years, um, they all talk about being able to play lots of different styles of music, understand what, you know, how to do all of these different technical things and be able to improvise and be able to basically be sort of a studio musician, like a freelance musician that can work. You know, that's most, 99% of them tell me that. So I go, okay, so let's, if you start with that as being your end goal, then you have to work backwards from that. And you go, okay, well, what do I need to know if I want to do the, these things? Well, I have to learn styles. I have to have really good technique. I have to have really good time. I have to be able to read. I have to be able to, you know, like there's all these other little things that come up. So if you're asking me what my favorite kind of student is, or, you know, I think it's very important that somebody maybe has been playing for a few years um, and has worked on some things. But the main thing that is important is that they're interested in doing the work. Like you have to be able to sit down and be by yourself and work at what you're doing. That's the first order of business. Um, and people find that difficult to do because they're used to playing with their friends and hanging out with their friends and jamming. But that's not really the same thing as working on your instrument. And I'm sure Simon can tell you it's those two worlds yeah. come together, but they develop in different ways. Thank you. Yes, that's my long answer to your short question. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for advice. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, yeah. So next question is for our alumni. So this one is from some of the new freshmen. So they okay. like to know how should students, how should the, the new student, I mean the freshman, choose their private lesson instructor after the enrollment? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last part. What did you say? Uh, oh, so this question is for our alumni, for, for Simon. So, oh, okay. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 就是他们新生他们会想知道，就是说该怎么去选择他们的自己的专业老师，就是说在入学前后。Okay, first you have you have to have a goal in your mind what you want like study and who you want to study with. You you want to study like um 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 really good technique. You choose Alex. He know he has a system. He has a system, right? You have a system. Like I have a system. Your mind. Have... Yeah. Yeah, in your mind. How, how do you get there? How do you get there? So that, that's really important. You have to choose the right person to teach you. Yeah, you have to know what they do the best. And every, every, I, I know every like base teacher, base instructor in MI is great, but they have like different, uh, I don't know, the English, so like. Different area or? Yeah, yeah, different area, different area, like, like really, really good at. Mm -hmm. So you have to like just you know know what what they do best. So got it. Yeah, and, and, and you know sometimes I would say just to you know um, again like when you first come, you know, depending on what level you're at in different areas, it may not make that much difference because you know you're just looking for a good teacher mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be you know a specialist in anything i mean you're just going you know i need to work on my reading i need to work on my technique i need to work on this i need to work on that and my theory and you know and most music instructors can help you with all those things you know that's that's really what it's all, all about okay thank you so well, well where is it <laughs> sorry Oh, so next question is still come from some of the new freshmen. So they would like to know, do they have the opportunities to set up their own band at MI? And uh, how many live performance they could play at each quarter or each year? Alex? Um, well, I'm assuming that 
if you're a student at MI, you can form your, you can form a band at MI. I mean, I'm pretty sure Simon was in about ten, right? Bands. I don't think uh, I don't think you have any problem putting bands together. Um, how many times can you play? I don't know, Simon. I mean, maybe you can answer that better than me. I mean, I think you can. I think the requirement is only ten performance credits, but I think you can play every day probably 10 times if you want yeah i i don't really know what the uh what the actual number is okay. personally you know we're talking about lpw right yes yes at first yeah okay um yeah you can you can do that like the, re the requirement i remember is like 10 10 times performance per quarter, per quarter which basically ends up per being quarter, yeah mm -hmm. like three times a month yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. nothing. It's easy to get. It's that. not enough. It's not enough. Definitely not enough. Like no. what I did is like have a like hundred and ten. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In one so, quarter. Yeah. So you're basically doing more like ten every week. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Not so, ten a month. So ten new <laughs> ten ten new songs, new tunes each week, right? Or yeah, you have to push yourself like sometime like grab the cheat sheet and go there and play. Listen to the music, go there and play. Don't so, okay. don't even care about like the music style, if you like or not. You just mm -hmm. go and play, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You gotta forget about all those things. You know, you're just there to play everything that you can. It doesn't matter if it's Latin music or R&B music or funk or rock or metal or what, you just go and do it, you know? Yeah. Got so it. Play yeah. rock music. Yeah, play rock music. You gotta be uh, aggressive and play pop. You gotta be like right there in time and groovy and play like bossa nova. You gotta be, you know, just bossa nova. Or Simon's favorite fusion. <laughs> punk, punk, <laughs> punk, <laughs> punk fusion. There you go. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, let's go for the next one. Is uh, could student minor in another instrument or major? I mean, this also from some of the new fresh freshman. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not sure what the, uh, what setup is for that. Simon, maybe you know better than me if you can do that. Simon. Um, I can't, I can't really remember if they, if they. No problem. No problem. Have that program set up like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think in bass really deep. I mean, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even choose an, another like minor, minor instrument, but. I think it's necessary to to know if you play bass, you have to know something about keyboard mm. and yeah. something about like pro, how do you, how do you, like do the program for live performance mm. because I, that's what I do in in China. Mm. Like I play bass and I have to like open the logic and and do all the programs. For the, yeah, yeah, just for the show. I mean, I I always you know I think there's a certain point where if you're studying bass, um, you have to, as Simon just said, you know, you have to really get into it. So you don't have a lot of time to start learning other instruments because the program's not that long. I mean, mm. if you only go for what, 18 yeah, months, yeah. it's not that long. I mean, so if you're practicing bass a lot and really working on that, um, that's what I would focus on. But having said that, I mean, my first instrument is keyboards. So all my life, I've always used piano um, as a way to hear harmony and to be able to figure out full chord changes and do all that kind of stuff. So it's super valuable if you can play something like that. And, and I'm sure, Simon, when you were going to the other music school, um, <laughs> they uh, they make you play piano, right? You have to. I mean, yeah. you, it's a requirement. Yeah. It's a requirement that you have to. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Got it. Thank you. So next one is uh, what kind of internship or uh, job opportunities where I might can provide for the current student and the graduates? Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> boy, I, I, another hard one. Another hard question. Well, you? It's, you know, I, I I I don't know what they actually do. I know that they have a. Um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Sort of like a website type thing where students can register and they 
they have people coming and auditioning people and things like that. Um, yeah, well, I think there was a guy, there was a guy there, right, Simon? Um, what was his name that was auditioning students for different bands sometimes? There was a guy that came in. I don't remember. I, uh, I can't I think, remember. Yeah, I, I think we have a But, career internship office. At, okay, yeah. I, I, again, you know, I'm not sure what they have set up. I mean, that's more of an administrative question than, than a, you know, maybe, I don't know, Simon, whatever your experience was with that, I really don't know. I, I don't know. Like, I never go in there. <laughs> never. It was too busy. Like, I know what I. Did. Yeah, you're too busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're too busy. <laughs> I mean, you, you, I know. Yeah, you didn't have to uh, go go for uh, like an office to ask for a job. You mean everybody just looking for you, right? Oh, that's you know, the before plan. I go. <laughs> before I get into MI, I know what I gonna do in the future. So I, I don't work in that that ah. office. Like, yeah, I just practice what I need and. I, You know, one of the things that they do, um, you know, that's in the music department, um, a lot of times what happens is, is that they will offer graduate students an opportunity to do TA work, like teacher's assistant mm -hmm. work. So you end up working, you know, that way. You can actually get, I think there's a visa that you can get if you're, if you're a foreign student, and it allows you to stay extra and get some practical training and practical experience. So that's maybe more what you're asking about but i don't know the details of that at all i have yeah. no idea how to go about doing that but i know a lot of students get that job for okay. sure yeah i mean i just uh, came out with another idea because uh, because you guys uh, are playing bass right it's not for vocal or guitar i mean bass right. is the most hard i mean how can I say that the, for the instrument the important most important instrument for everybody for every single band so you guys don't don't really don't have to ask for a job from the office. I mean, everybody want to go, 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 go for ask for help for, from you guys. So you guys, this is also another important thing for the bass player, right? Um, well, I think uh, it's harder to find a bass player. It's yeah. hard to, you know, because the there's not that as many. There's lots, many, many more guitarists, obviously. Many, many more drummers than bass players. And, and that's the same is. in school as it is in Singer. the real world. Um, so of course, if if they hear somebody and they can play, um, ever they're going they're going to ask you right away. Hey, can you come and do this? Can you come and do that with me? You know, and or I have an audition for so and so. And so yeah, I think it. But it, I, I think it's more uh, just a reflection of how many bass players there are in the world. Never mind at MI. There's just less. It's just not. You know, that's just the way it is. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Let's we'll go for the next one. So this one is like. Almost like a, the maybe most important question for the Chinese parents. So this one is how do you feel about living in LA? Because you know most of the Chinese or the Asia, the parents in Asia countries, they just feel maybe the US, United States is not I mean the safe as safe as uh, the Asia countries, especially in China. So how do you feel living in LA about the neighbor? And, and also maybe we can talk about the the, the, the food or something like others. Oh boy. Um, well, yeah, that's a tough one. Um, yeah. I mean, especially you know, right now, the COVID 19 and the racial staffs, especially yeah. the last guy in the house, especially that one, that time. I mean, you know, in America, boy, I don't even know how to answer that question, uh, you know, in anything under two hours. Um, all of my, when I was a student, All of my friends um, were students, you know, and we came from everywhere, all over the world. I had friends from Sweden, friends from Holland, uh, people that were there from Africa. There were Japanese students, Thai students. I mean, you know, none of us cared where anybody was from. It was irrelevant to me where anybody was from. Um, And in the years that I've been a teacher there, I still feel the same way. But that has really nothing to do with music. That has more to just do with who you are. I mean, I, I knew Simon very well when he was a student. We hang out, we talk, we play, we, you know, 
we had a teacher student relationship that was great and uh, you know the fact that he's from china doesn't matter to me at all he could be from anywhere you know but he happens to be from china um i was giving lessons to a to a guy that lives in washington dc who um is also from china and he's the nicest guy in the world you know and he's there with his wife and his two kids in washington and you know so is it safe I think, it, like any big city, it's as safe as a big, big city can be. I mean, I can't, you know, L.A. is L.A. It's not a little town where everybody knows everybody. It is what it is. And so all, all of the people that I spent time with were all in my little circle of friends, and we were all happy to be together, and we took care of each other in terms of, you know, like I never walked, we never walked home alone. You know, even the guys never walked home alone. We would always go, hey, what time are you leaving? You know, it's like 1130 at night. Oh, okay, well, give me another half hour and then we'll all go together. You know, and that was a long time ago. That was nothing like a couple, mm. three years ago. I mean, this is a long time ago. But, you know, it's, you have to be careful everywhere you go in the world. I mean, yeah, that, that's, exactly. things can happen. Exactly. Things can happen. Yes. And you have to be careful. You know, you got to be careful for sure. For sure. Okay. I don't know. Maybe, again, you know, maybe, you know, Simon's experience is different. I mean, he was a student, so he would know. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this one? Or Well, well, well my time in L.A. is most mostly in school. I mean, I it's practice like, like practice. I get 2 a.m. in the morning and just school have, has a bus, like, just t t take us home, safety, uh -huh. so... Yeah. yeah, I mean, the food there is good. It's good. Like, you, you can have, like, Thai food. You can have, like, Mexican food. You can have, like, you know, fast food. Any food you can get. Like, I mean, it's it's great in L.A. What is great in L.A., I think, is you have a lot of opportunity to see people play mm. on stage. Mm. You know, baked potato and, uh, you know, catadina. Yeah, the cast, Catalina, the the cast, like so many great musicians play there. You have to go, you have to go there, like watch them play, watch the different level, like yeah. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. well, we are going so fast. So, uh, let's go. Well, for that's because we know what we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go for the last one, the last question. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so what would you say to the young musicians or students? Do you have any suggestion for them, Alex? I have many suggestions for them. And Great. I think um, one of the things that, you know, once again, as we talked about earlier, I think that you have to be willing to really get into what you're doing. And I have this, I have this conversation now. I had this conversation 10 years ago with students from Peng's era. I had this conversation 20 years ago. You really have to understand what it means to get into working on your instrument, because that's why you're here. Um, you can go out, you can go to the beach, you can do all these things and everything, but that's not really why you came halfway around the world. You know, you came because you want to learn how to play music and you think you, in your heart that this is something that you want to do for the rest of your life at a high level or the highest level that you can get to personally you know um so i think that if you think that way that's the most important thing you have to really be willing to sit down in a room by yourself and practice your instrument and work these things out because it's the only chance you'll get right like Simon's working now, right? You don't have all day to practice. You have things to do. You have other people who are going, you know, you got to be here and you got to do this and you got to do that. And it's the same thing for me. I mean, I'm working, I'm working. I can't just sit all day. Although in the last year and a half, I had more time than ever in my life. It's unbelievable. Um, so, you know, that's really the main thing that I would say to them. I mean, I, I think you have to be willing to, to work. At, at what you at what you say you love i mean 
you know, you shouldn't, you should never have to tell anybody that they have to go and practice. They should know that and they should just do it because they love doing it, not because you're making them do it. You know, that's, that's my advice to everybody who's trying to get into music on a professional level. I mean, I, I have friends who are world famous musicians, um, who still work really hard at their craft. I mean, that's, they do that. They work at what they do and they've been doing it at a very high level for many, many, many years. So that's the, those are the people that I look to for inspiration. You know, that's, that's really where, where I find it. So got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's my advice. Thank you. Uh, how about you, Thema? Yeah, just <clears throat> go to IMI. Don't think anything else. You have to practice. You have to be prepared. Like, and you have to be on time. Like they tell you, like be here at like 9 p.m. You don't be there at like nine, like oh five. Just on time. Like be strict. Like um, and you have to listen listen to a lot different music music like style. Just for your future. And what I have to say, like. Yeah, you, you know, you have to know why you go there and mm. what you want to get from there and what you're going to do after you graduate. So, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think the big difference, you know, is a lot of people, I mean, people like music everywhere in the world and people have fun with music everywhere in the world. But the difference is, is that when you decide that you want to be a professional musician who does that for a living, all the criteria change, you know, everything changes then because you're saying, okay, I don't want to have a job somewhere else. I want to do this. And then you have to start thinking, well, how do I do that? What do I have to know to be able to do that? And you go from not working as a musician, to making your living as a musician. And that's a big difference, you know? Yeah. Lots of people know how to play the guitar at parties and with their friends. And lots of people have a set of drums and people play the piano a little bit and they learn the song and they have fun with it. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about something completely different than that, you know? And when you get to that point where you really want to be able to perform and work and, and be a musical director and run logic and back up a singer and write charts and rehearse a band and you know all these things that's a whole other level of involvement that that uh, you have to be willing to work at to, to to learn how to do it you know yeah. it's like learning how to arrange music i don't know how to arrange strings i have no clue none but somebody who's a string arranger I mean, they spent hundreds of hours learning how to do that. So they go, yeah, of course I can do this for you, you know? So they sit and they write and, you know, you look at the music and you're going, oh my God, this is like amazing. It's like magic. And they go, no, it's not magic. I just know what I'm doing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's the thank big you. difference. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And sure. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for today. For um, and Thank you so much for uh, for your time to support yeah, our yeah, event today. Thank you. Let me just stop the recording.